Whiskey, the about eight month old, maybe nine month old pit bull at this point. He's been with us about four or five weeks. We actually have another week left with him before he's ready to go home. Uh, but George, our amazing cameraman and videographer, might not be available next week when we take him home. So we want to give you that final glimpse as to where Whiskey is uh, in his path and journey to be a well-behaved and obedient uh, young pup. Uh, if you remember when he first got here, he was about the wildest you could, you could ever get out of any dog. He's just frantic, crazy, tail wagging, didn't listen, didn't know his name, no sits, no, nothing, nothing. It was nothing combined with like the energy of a Tasmanian devil. And now we've been able to slow him down a little bit, yet keep his personality and stack on some obedience with that. So let's see how he does today. Uh, he's definitely a little energetic today. Um, he was just running around off screen for about a minute or two, take a little bit of the edge off. And by the way, he's allowed to run around off leash with the gate wide open. And we're not worried about him going anywhere because we can recall him with a 100% guaranteed reliability that only the e-collar can afford. So he is wearing an e-collar right now. He also has a 2.25 millimeter Herm Springer on. We may or may not use that if we show you some of his leash pressure. We just go ahead and have it on. It doesn't hurt to have it on while he's out and about. And uh, in fact, while we talk a little bit more about whiskey, let's walk this way. His job is to stay on the place board, stay. So we'll walk and talk and we'll kind of get the boring stuff out of the way. Nobody wants to see a long duration stay. It's actually, there's not much to show you. So uh, some of the ways we're able to train him and how his training differed than the training of some dogs we typically have in our program is a lot of dogs that come into our program are actually a little flat, a little boring. We want to bring out a little bit of energy, enthusiasm and excitement. I'm trying to cheat my way with the, with the lighting here, uh, yet keep him in frame. We can keep shooting. Look at that ear. He's got one ear up, one ear down. <laughs> He is a funny dog. All right, so you can see that beautiful downstay on the place board. And uh, what we were starting to say is how we cater the training for every dog that comes in our program. We cater it to the individual dog. What do they need? In his case, what he needed was to flatten out a little bit. He's just so manic, so crazy, that when his mental motor gets above 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, even 100 miles per hour, meaning maxed out, he's hit red line, he's not listening to anyone for anything. He literally doesn't even hear you. It's like auditory uh, exclusion, occlusion. You know what I'm talking about. Look it up. My point is he's just so manic, he, he gets almost like a tunnel vision and doesn't see or hear any commands that are being given to him. That's pretty much any dog. All right, the downstay has been long enough. Let's go back and pay him for doing a wonderful job. Uh, you'll see on me, I have his e-collar remote. I have a clicker. We may or may not use it. Um, and this is a leash, should we need it, in case we want to show you some of his uh, leash pressure stuff. In fact, we'll show you that now. Let's get that out of the way. And look, he did such a wonderful job in his stay that we'll give him a little payment right here on the place board and let him know, hey, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. His stays were absolute garbage. I mean, it didn't even exist. In fact, it's one of the last things we taught him about three days ago. We dialed in and taught him how to stay for real. And now he's doing a wonderful job. Uh, so let's go ahead and hook him up to the leash and show you leash pressure. Notice I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna let the leash do all the talking. Very important that your dog understands leash pressure so that you can get the reliability and have what we call an empowered voice. And let's take a moment uh, for our sponsors. I'm my own sponsor, DIYK9.com. We have many courses coming out. We already have our e-collar course out, but it's gonna be followed up by leash pressure courses, puppy courses, you name it. Every course you could need from your dog from A to Z is gonna be available on our DIYK9.com. And one of the things we teach in our courses is the importance of having an empowered voice. That means if I tell a dog to sit or to place or to down or to come to me, every time you tell them to do something, they make an actual conscious decision whether to listen to you or not. It's our job as owners and trainers to guarantee the reliability and let the dog know every time I tell you to do something, not only should you do it because you're going to get paid at the end of that rainbow, but you have to do it because if you choose not to do it, you're going to go down a path that you don't want to be on. It's a path filled with broken glass and barbed wire and it's just closed. It's a permanent detour. Your permanent detour is when I tell you to do something, you have to do it. No longer are you allowed to play the runaway game. No longer are you allowed to ignore me. That's part of the process. So what allows you to have an empowered voice? Well, here's a little sneak peek. If I tell him to sit and he chooses not to do it, what are my alternatives? What is my course of action at that point? What would you do at home? You told your dog to sit, but he's too crazy. He's running around. He's not listening to you. Most people start screaming at their dog. Sit! Ah! 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We call that taking your voice from maybe a 20% reliability. All right, scream at your dog. Maybe you're getting a 30% reliability. Well, I have something here in my hand that gives me 100% reliability. 100% if it's hooked up to them. If it's not hooked up, then we switch to this. This gives you 100% reliability. And then you have what we call an empowered voice. I'm not saying you even have to use the tool. Is there should you need it. So that way when you say sit, they know, you know what, I'm gonna listen to mom and dad because every time I don't listen, something bad happens. Every time I do listen, something good is likely to happen. So let's give him a test. He's in what we would call like a lazy down. So his chances of doing an SIT by voice, uh, let's give it 50% by voice because he's kind of lazy. Maybe if he does it, I'm gonna pay him. If he doesn't, I'm gonna pressure him into it. I have a 100% reliability with this. So again, he's still got a week left of training, so little things to iron out. Enough yapping for me. Say, Gary, get to it. Get ready. Three, two, one, sit. Thought about it, but now I'm gonna make it happen. I have options to make it happen. In this case, we're gonna show you the leash. It's gonna make it happen. And watch how his tail's wagging, right? You would say this dog's happy to be here. After I leash pressure him with a prong collar, He's still going to be happy. Watch. Sit, and I'll help him. We'll pay for that. So we need to work on his sits from a down. We'll make a note of that, and over the next week, we'll iron that out. Let's try down. See, that's nice. And the reason he's not sitting from a down is it's not because he's choosing not to listen to me. He actually doesn't quite know. You can see he's trying to, to do it, but that's one of the last things we teach. Now, with leash pressure only, we're calling it fingertip pressure. Pay attention to how my hands are holding this leash. Oh my God, like a little buttercup. How much would you say he weighs, Austin? 65, 70 pounds. I was thinking that, 65 pounds. He's just a little beefcake. 65 pound dog that now my three, four year old daughter can walk because he's fingertip pressure. Sits and downs and pulling him on and off the free. Pulling him on and off, free. Yeah, 65 straight muscle. Now we'll pressure him back on, right? When might I need to pressure my dog under the place board? Free, knock, knock, knock at the door. He's trying to kill the mailman and I tell him to place. If he chooses not to because he's distracted, I can use the leash to make him do it. Dogs do not come with automatic leash pressure built in. In fact, they have the opposite of that. They have opposition reflex. You pull them to go on the place board, they're gonna fight you. You pull them to go in the, into their crate, they're gonna fight you. You are on a walk and they're dragging you this way and you try to pull them back, they just pull harder. So our leash pressure course will show you how to overcome all of that and make your dog just like a little baby on the leash. Beautiful. All right, George, what were you saying? What, what do I need to teach him? Hand commands? Oh, sure, sure. Let's take the leash off. Oops, and we're gonna show you some hand commands. Let's see how he does. You tell me at home on a scale of one, one to 10, 10 being amazing, one being you suck, Garrett. Let's see how his hand commands are. Decent, decent, I'll give myself an eight. <laughs> Not bad, I'll take it. Let's see how his stand hand command is. We don't work on it a lot, but let's see if he's got it. Decent, we'll take it, we'll take it. Let's do a couple more of those, a little faster rep. That's the stand one we could work a little more on. Perfect. So, all right, our camera's starting to overheat a little bit. How much time do we have left? <laughs> we'll see, we're gonna keep going. Let's go into the, uh, the grand finale. The grand finale, let's do some off leash healing with this wild man. Free, come on. I know you don't wanna come off the place board, let's go. Whiskey here, heal. So I got some food. Obviously, if he does a good job, I'll pay him. We get some complaints saying, your dog's only healing next to you because you have food. Uh, okay, well, let's try it without food. I'm gonna pass this to you, Austin. And we like to keep paying him because he's still training. He's, still, he's out here working for us. Here, heal. Good boy. And let's pick that place board up while I'm over here. And now I can use the e-collar, should I need to, to make him nice and tight. There we go, that was a little low pressure on the e-collar. Let him know, hey, remember, you have a job to do, and that's to stay next to me, whether I have food or not. He's still in training, folks. His training is gonna continue even when we bring him home, and that's to charge up that when the owners tell you to heal, or the owners come to a stop, that you stop and auto sit, whether you have food or not, all right? He has a job to do, and a dog like this needs a job to do, because this boy here is bred to bait bulls and go after boars, go hunting, uh, technically fight other dogs, right? 
that's not what we want to do with him. That's not what I'm recommending. I'm just saying this dog needs to work. And we're going to channel all that work into some amazing obedience. Let's do a little bit more healing. And then we'll call this video done because we are running out of uh, juice on that camera. Heal. All right, let's do a little faster pace. Come on, Bubba. Do a little left hand turn. I'll come to another stop. That stop, that sudden stop, shows me that he is in it to win it and he's paying attention to me. And now, because he's doing such a good job, I'm gonna F-R-E-E him -E free. He can do whatever he wants. If he wants to hang out next to me, that's fine. If he wants to go play with Austin, he can do that. He can be free now, you can check him out. And then you know what? We'll, we'll finalize this with a recall and call it done. Uh, let's go, I'll go down here. Let him be a free dog. He's sniffing, he's peeing, he's having a good time. We are on just a regular neighborhood road with a loose pit bull. <laughs> And now, look at him, he's, he's in it to win it for something. And now, Garrett, can you recall him? Let's see, keep the eyes on him. I wanna see if he wants to pee. Yeah, I don't like to recall the dog off while they're peeing. All right, he's done peeing, now it's time to recall him. Whiskey, here. Little touch of the e-collar to reinforce that empowered voice. He's in a down stay without the place board. He's a little cooked, but his job is to stay there. This is what we really struggled with. Um, in just a minute, I'm gonna free him. And then we'll do uh, one nice final recall, see how he does with it. Because that recall was meh. All right, let's uh, free him up. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the interim. I'm just really happy we got to get these downstays money. Still got another week, a couple little things to iron out, but still like tremendous improvement from where he was. Uh, before he's just a crazy man. Now you can take him anywhere. So that's what we're going to do this next week. Continue to take him a lot of places, continue to work on everything you've already seen just continue to tighten it up free let's go over here let's have a good time do whatever in fact austin why don't you call him sure. ready now whiskey here oh oh something to work on he's really stuck with me try again whiskey here there we go no e-collar needed again whiskey here that was an e-collar see he says oh you sure i'm supposed to go to you yes you are yes you are there we go we got one minute left, now I get one recall. If we need the e-collar, we use it. If not, we don't. All right, three, two, one. Whiskey, here. No e-collar needed, happy to be here, tail wagging, even though he just got a stem not a minute ago. All right, folks, thank you all very much for watching. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Still a lot of work left to be done. And uh, stay tuned for some more, we'll see you.